You're listening to Humans in Tech. Our podcast explores today's most transformative technology and the trends of tomorrow, bringing together the brightest minds in and outside of our industry. We unpack what's new in physical access, identity verification, cybersecurity, and IoT ecosystems. We reach beyond the physical world, discuss our digital transformation as a species, and dive into the emerging digital experience. Join us on our journey as we discover just how connected the future will be and how we will fit into that picture. Your host is Lee Dow, VP of Global Marketing at Identive. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm joined by the entire marketing team here at Identive. And uh, true confession, every time I hear that intro, it makes me giggle because there are people in my life who can't say my name without saying it exactly the way the intro says, where they say, Lee Dow. And I won't name names, but one of them uh, is related to a person on our call today. (laughs) Um, So thank you for um, joining us today. Cybersecurity is a very complex and serious market um, that's definitely exploding. Uh, And the demands on digital marketers to keep pace with that dramatic growth in services and solutions and versus competition um, is definitely, uh, you know, keeps us hopping uh, on the Identif marketing team. So I thought maybe we could start with just quickly going around and telling us your name uh, and what you do in marketing at Identif. Maybe start with Allison. Yeah, my name is Allison Rose. I just joined the Identif marketing team. Um, I'm in PR, so um, I'm tasked with writing press releases and just helping with generating content, creating content, um, reaching, doing outreach to the media, and all that fun stuff. And Allie's having a very good day because she just scored a nice media placement for Identif. Woo-woo. <laughs> um, Tamira, you want to go next? Absolutely. Um, my name is Tamara Kayser, and I'm the Performance Marketing Manager and Social Media for Identif. And I've been with the company for about a year and work with kind of optimizing our processes and kind of supporting all of the different marketing activities on a foundational level. Anya, you're up. Hey, I'm Anya Pellegrino, and I'm the Senior Manager of Brand Strategy. I've been with Identif for almost eight and a half years, um, having started out as a sole copywriter that quickly took ownership of the brand voice of the company. McKenna? Um, So hi, I'm McKenna Boos. Um, I'm the Product Marketing Manager here at Identif. Um, I've been here for about three months, so Super excited to be here. Um, I support the premises side of the business um, by just providing market and competitive research while also driving and creating um, our account-based marketing campaigns. And Kathleen. Hi, my name is Kathleen Thompson. I am working on product marketing strategy for Identive. I'm probably the newest on the team here at just under three weeks. (laughs) So I will be digging in on a lot of the 2023 plan and looking at each of the distinct business units to see what type of marketing strategies we're going to employ over the next year. And not with us today is Ryan Burke, uh, who is our global channel and partner program manager. Uh, Ryan is uh, blissfully doing something that is blissful to her, not to me, Um, (laughs) but uh, she's on vacation camping, which is her version of bliss, definitely not mine. (laughs) Same. Um, So uh, I wanted to maybe start with, um, you know, what do you all like about working in the security industry? I know that, um, you know, for McKenna, uh, her whole career has been in security. Um, For me, Kathleen, Allison, uh, Tamira, uh, not the case. Uh, Anya, you've been uh, with the company for quite some time and you've been in the security industry, but not for your entire career. Um, so maybe some of the things that you like working, you know, you like about working in the security industry. I can go ahead and uh, kick this off. So I think my favorite part is just the constant change in growth. I feel like this industry is very limitless and there's always new products, technology, or like solutions coming out um, almost every day or every week. Um, and it's a really cool industry to be in because I'm just excited to see where we'll be in the next few years and where we're going to be at. Awesome. So I'm, uh, I'm going to follow up McKenna. Uh, it's never boring. And that's um, the honest, albeit short answer. And looking at it a bit more deeply, I think the reason I like it is twofold. One, the technology is fluid. It's always changing. And again, it's never boring. Um, we're in an industry that is perpetually innovating and planning, like McKenna said, for the next five, 10, 50 years. 
Uh, and two, I like the people. Security technology is packed full of nerds, and I'm a big fan of big brains. <laughs> One of the things that I think is really interesting about security, um, and and not just security, but you know all of the different um, solutions that we have uh, at Identiv, is that you know our three business units uh, are very different in many ways. Um, you know, in the transponder side and RFID and NFC, we're very much. Um, deep into, you know, IoT and being um, a big part of connecting the IoT, which is limitless um, in logical access. We're such a huge part of driving some of the things that are at the forefront of security, um, data security today, things like multi-factor authentication, FIDO. Um, and then um, in the physical access space, um, you know, same thing. We are in some of the most secure buildings in the world, um, which is really interesting. Uh, but what I think is, is, you know, a learning for me coming out of, you know, different industries is that every time I go to a trade show, no matter which piece of the business it is, everyone knows everyone. Um, you know, most of the people who work in security tend to stay in security for the, their, their entire career, uh, which is not true for some of the other industries that I've worked in. Uh, so trade shows are always really interesting to me because, you know, everyone knows everyone or you could be standing with somebody in a booth and they'll, they'll be like, oh, there's my old boss. So, oh, and there's a guy I used to work with and, um, which is just a unique experience that I haven't had in other, in other industries. It's so true. Once you're in it, you never leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, obviously, um, you know, we're responsible for communicating really complex technical topics and trying to break them down in a way that is more simplified. Not that the audience doesn't understand the complexity, but what I found in my years of marketing, I've, I've pretty much always been in technology marketing, starting with um, when I started working at Intel. And uh, I think one of the gifts that, that marketing people tend to have and that they, what they bring uh, to the industry is the ability to, you know, it's really difficult to tell a technical story. Um, it's difficult to find people who can, you know, pick up a technical story and tell it in a way that people want to read it or hear about it. Um, and so for me, I think that that is one of our most um, complex challenges that we have uh, whenever we're trying to, you know, bring a new product or a new solution to life. Absolutely, Lee. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. I've been writing since I could hold a pencil. So if I've learned anything in my nearly four decades of doing so, it's that whittling down those complex technical topics down to a story that is clear and accessible and human um, is what I'm always striving towards. And it's been my top priority since day one uh, in creating content for Identive. It's absorbing that source material, understanding the tech, then transforming that into a story that can speak to someone who has maybe like never heard of multi-factor authentication or radio frequency identification or FIDO or what have you. Um, and I think I'm extra qualified to do this because security was not my background, like you mentioned earlier. I came to Identive from lifestyle and tourism publications and medical nonprofit work. Uh, and I majored in English creative writing. I minored in Spanish poetry. So it's like I'm, it's, it's like as if I am my own audience, right? If that makes sense. You're a I'm unicorn. Writing. I am a unicorn. <laughs> so, you but know. That's a, that's a compliment coming from the biggest unicorn I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are often times in this industry where I do feel like a unicorn, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, all of you, um, you know, Tamira is not as involved in the creative element of what we do or the storytelling part of what we do. But, but you know, Tamira, a lot of what you do informs how we tell that story. So, you know, when you're thinking about, um, you know, in performance marketing and digital um, marketing management, all the data that we have at our disposal now um, to not only identify, you know, as McKenna mentioned earlier, account-based marketing, but like to identify which accounts, you know, we should be focused on, um, but also what story to tell. And the data is a really huge component of that, um, that, uh, you know, a lot of marketing teams are still really trying to learn how to do that better. Yes, definitely, Lee. Um, one of the things that all of the data and the backend systems allow us to do is meet our customers where they are in their specific journey with the right messaging, with the right content, and provide them the next steps along the way to some of their decision making. I think that one of the, so, you know, with you doing that work and bringing that to the team, 
um, and helping to inform how we um, go to market and how we tell those stories. And like you said, which pieces of content we use at what part of the journey. Um, I think it's really interesting to see also the difference between, you know, content that we create uh, that is mostly in um, Anya's purview and then the content that we pitch um, and the stories that we pitch uh, in Allison's world and how the similarities and differences, right? Um, because of the, the, if you think about taking something very complex and breaking it down for an audience that's already interested in security, um, that's you know one thing in creating content or blog posts and telling a story around it. And then you have to take that and, and really um, basically hone in even more um, to the really like salient point um, to do the pitch. Right, Allison, that's... Yeah, I mean, and, and this content is more challenging than any other content, I would say. Although, you know, there are a lot of tech outlets and, and places that you can target. But, you know, telling a really um, significant and interesting story with the subject matter, even to tech outlets, can be, can be tough because tech is so big. Yeah, it's and very diverse. Get, yeah, it's very diverse and you can get lost in it. Yeah, when we target outlets that are, you know, like RFID Journal, obviously that's what they live and breathe all day long, so they have a different kind of understanding. But when you're trying to target, you know, a tech writer who maybe doesn't understand multi-factor authentication and it's not something that they, you know, talk about all day or, or RFID or NFC, um, that can be really challenging to get the stories placed. Um, Anya, what do you, what do you think um, are the elements that go into telling a compelling story? Is it talking more about, you know, how humans use the tech? Um, is it, you know, more so than what the tech is itself? Uh, I think it's a combination of the two, right? So, and when I'm, when I'm writing um, or assigning someone out, something out to someone else, it's always thinking about, okay, breaking it down first, how does the tech how does the tech work? What it, what actually is the technology? And trying to take as much of the complexity out of that as possible. And then to your first point, it's the human experience with that technology, right? So it's about how it's affecting or changing or transforming our everyday lives. So that's really the undercurrent that I'm, I'm trying to make sure gets, you know, buried into each piece that we're putting out there. So Tamara mentioned the customer journey and the data that informs, you know, what that journey is and then what we should do about it. Um, Kathleen, I know you've done a lot of work, um, even in the short time that you've you've been with Identive around customer journeys. Why is that important? Well, I think it's really important to understand the problems that your audience might be trying to solve with technology and then delivering the messages that speak to those solutions. So trying to communicate how Identive has a solution that might solve their problem at each stage of that journey is where it gets really important. And it's going to be different from market segment to market segment. The problem you're trying to solve for somebody who's interested in um, tamper resistance on packaging is going to be very different than the person who's trying to um, track quantities on a pharmaceutical device. Uh, so you really want to make sure that you're helping them understand how your technology solves their distinct problems. And McKenna, for you, you moved from uh, residential security to commercial security. Um, how has that been, uh, that, that transition? I think it was really uh, a challenge at first, kind of realizing who the end user was. Um, obviously, someone who is just trying to secure their home needs different things than someone in a commercial building. So I think the messaging and kind of getting that consumer to want to buy your product um, was the biggest change for me when uh, doing that switch. Yeah, definitely switching from uh, B2C to B2B is is a, a big difference from, from a marketing standpoint. I know that all of us, you know, look to a lot of B2C companies, ones that aren't even in our industry for inspiration, um, you know, I tend to, me personally, I really lean into looking at um, sports and entertainment uh, for inspiration because they're almost always at the forefront of digital marketing uh, and using technology to um, do experiential marketing. Uh, so I always look to those for inspiration. Um, what are some of the industries or companies that you look at for inspiration? That's a question for everybody. Don't everyone jump on it at once. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I said, I'm... sports and entertainment. I mean, for me, that seems yeah, like an obvious. For me, it's fashion. Oh, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that's definitely an obvious, I think that's an obvious for both of you. I, you know what, I'm always inspired <laughs> by music and that's not, oh, yeah. and I don't necessarily know if that's, I don't necessarily know that that's like a direct correlation. It, it's just like listening to different types of music gets me inspired to write about different things, right? So it just drives the energy when I'm creating content, I guess. What's the, I know you got me turned on to, um, <laughs> what is it? The hip hop, uh, what was it? No, it I can't is low fi Lo hip hop. Hip -hop. Yes. Yes. Lo fi hip hop girl. She is that YouTube channel is like, is, is my church <laughs> while I'm during my work day for sure. Yeah. I remember you saying that like a lot of times if I have to focus, um, I listen to like haptic kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, I did tune into the, the lo-fi hip hop and I really liked it. Um, it's definitely good for just getting you into like that creative mindset and, and, you know, for me and maybe for all of us, but I know just for me personally, um, I spend the majority of my day in my analytic brain. Uh, it's just the nature of my job, the metrics matter, um, and how they impact, uh, you know, how, what we do impacts revenue matters. And so I spend a lot of my day in my analytic brain. I'm sure Tamira does as well because of the nature of her role. Um, so when I do have to do creative direction or, you know, flip to the creative side, I really have to do a lot to shift my mindset um, to be able to be more creative and, um, and sort of change my approach to, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, what about the rest of you? Do you guys find that you have to do that as well? Oh, 100%. I, I stand instead of sit. I have to change my environment completely to force my brain to think differently. I think that's so funny as I'm, as I'm standing right now, as I'm like shaking my head and agreeing with what Lee just said, like actually I'm doing the opposite, right? So when I have to turn on my analytical brain, I turn off all of the other, other distractions. Like I can't listen to music. Like I have Same. to sit down. Otherwise I'm Kathleen and I'm like, I'm standing at my desk or I'm pacing or I'm listening to music or I'm dancing while I'm writing. So it's just, yeah. Well, and I, I guess know. mine is so severe that anyone, uh, pretty much everyone who's on this, this um, session knows that I wake up with my best ideas creatively. And so like I have, apparently I have to completely shut down <laughs> and go to sleep in order for my creative brain to be like, okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> So we do know this about you. Yeah, <laughs> she dreams it. I do. I dream it. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's it. That's what we should be doing. <laughs> Leah's a problem. We're just like, go to sleep. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> go to sleep. You'll figure it out. Well, I once told her that she's like a vampire. <laughs> I'm like, OK, you're up really early, but you were up really late last night, too. What is happening? You're, you're one of those vampire unicorn, Allison. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. And yeah, you, but it I'm, is now. I'm one of those people, though, that like when I when I go to sleep, I mean, I could fall asleep anytime, anywhere, any place. But when I do go to sleep, it's like less than 30 seconds and I'm out. Like, and this is why and this is why we hate you. Uh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> like, I don't think I've taken melatonin a day in my life. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in this industry, um, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges? Um, I know that I get asked a lot about, you know, the whole unicorn thing. And I do get a lot of media inquiries about, you know, being a woman in security and being a woman in a leadership role in security. Um, and so, you know, I would say that, you know, I've been a woman in tech for many decades, more than I'd like to say out loud. And um, and I find that uh, it's definitely gotten better. Um, and in security, I find that it really just depends on the event or the um, uh, the technology, you know, um, in physical access control. I've definitely been in some events where I really do feel like a unicorn that I might be like one of, you know, I could count on one hand how many women are there. And the only good part about that is that, you know, the bathroom is never crowded. I never have to wait in line. Um <laughs> So that you know, one place. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, you know, so that that has its its challenges. But, you know, apart from that, um, I don't really get asked a lot about some of the bigger challenges in marketing. And uh, for me, I think that it's just that um, actually Kathleen and I just had this conversation yesterday where um, I was saying that, you know, I'm still very hands on, even if I'm at an executive role. And I'm OK with that because marketing changes so rapidly now, especially the digital side of it, that I don't feel like I would be able to keep up with my skill set and really kind of trying to push the boundaries of, you know, what's next and, and you know, where we can excel and um, and, you know, like I said, take those next steps if, if I wasn't. 
Um, so that for me is one of the challenges in marketing is just the rapid change, especially with digital technologies um, and how we uh, get messages out there. Uh, what about for some of you guys? I mean, I would agree with what you just said, just feeling like you know the best ways to deliver those messages to your audiences, you have to keep up with the changing in technology so that you are hitting them where they're at and communicating through the channels that they want to receive the messages. So for me, that's the biggest channel or the biggest challenge is trying to make sure that I'm understanding all the things that are impacting our audience. I also think not, you know, not necessarily identif, but just in general, a lot of times marketing doesn't have um, as much access to the customer or the end user mm. uh, as the sales team does. And, you know, really needing um, a lot of that communication and feedback to be given to us on, you know, what are the customer pain points and what are the, the problems that they're trying to solve? And especially when you sell through a channel uh, rather than directly to an end user, um, you know, really understanding what that end user is looking for and, and how to message that. For sure. Absolutely. And, you know, I won't name names, but for me, the biggest challenge, and I love the people I work with, you know this, <laughs> uh, but everyone thinks they know everything about marketing, oh, I know. right? Oh, so, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when they're not in marketing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's collect. You can hear this collective ugh from everyone as soon as I said that. So, yeah, so, so. I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably true for, for most professions, right? I mean, my sister's a physician, and when I try to ask her physician questions, she's like, ugh. <laughs> like, you know, like, don't, don't tell me what Dr. Google said. Um, I, exactly. Yeah, so, so, yeah, no, I feel that pain a lot. Um, and, you know, you want people to be collaborative, and you want them to be interested in what we do. But it would yeah. it would be like me walking up to an engineer and being like, are you sure you want to put that part there? <laughs> right. I, I wish you would never do. No, never. But, but when the roles are reversed, it feels and I think that I think it's a great thing that we as a team or that marketing as an industry is an approachable piece of the puzzle. Right. Like we are collaborative, like th that's that's our job is to work with all of these teams and to stay interconnected. But at the same time. That means you keep that door open, that you're, you're you almost feel like you're all constantly fighting to be ex ex accepted as the expert, even if you've been immersed in your field for 25 years. Oh, yeah. Right? I remember so one time mm -hmm. I um, was having a conversation with somebody and they were telling someone, oh, well, you know, maybe you should just go work with Lee. And I was like, this person has no marketing background whatsoever, <laughs> no PR background, no education in any of those things. Um, not even a degree in business. And um, I was like, so is there some decades of experience that they have that I'm not aware of? And the response I got was, well, but you just need a personality. Yeah, mm. but anyone can do it. Anyone can, anyone do, anyone it. can do it. <laughs> and I just don't think people realize today, if they're not working in marketing, um, you know, how much data um, and uh, metrics go into what we do. In fact, a lot of times when I interview people um, for the last probably 10 years or more, um, for certain jobs, I'll ask them, you know, things like, what are their Excel skills? What are their, you know, data skills? And sometimes I get met with blank stares and I'm like, well, then you, you're you not a marketer. Um, marketing really has a lot of science behind it, more so than ever. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't know how to look at metrics and analytics and and actually not tell the weather, but talk about what they mean and what we should do about it. Um, I, you know, that's that's something that all marketers need to have in their skill set today. Um, so what are, you know, since it's such a fast moving industry, how do you think, uh, you know, what do you think are the best ways to deliver the brand value to target audiences in a way that, you know, really hits the right message at the right time? I have something to say <laughs> about this. <laughs> I don't know. It, it may be what I do day in and day out, but uh, you have to stay hyper connected what's happening in the industry, right? Which of course means being plugged into the digital news cycle and social media. And that is pretty counterintuitive to my personality. Like everyone on this call knows that I'm highly anxious and empathetic. So staying open to that influx of information in today's digital transformation can be overwhelming on, on my own nervous system. But it's those same personality traits, which hopefully make me a decent content creator. Um, <laughs> 
but I have to, I have to push myself to, to stay plugged in. That doesn't necessarily come uh, naturally to me. And I would say working with the type of data that Tamir is sharing with the team on a regular basis helps identify exactly what spots Annie needs to plug that content into. Absolutely. Well, and such a welcome, you know, addition to the team uh, uh, in the last year, uh, because, you know, I know that, um, like, I spent a lot of time, like I said, in the metrics and looking at that, that stuff. But, um, you know, there are things where a problem or a challenge of trying to figure something out just seems so difficult. And Tamir will just be like, well, we should just do it this way. I'm like, why did I think of that? That's right. We should do it that way. <laughs> so we've, um, jo- we've joked about her job title actually being like professional problem solver. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. She's our, fix- she's our fixer. <laughs> a lot of tools in the tool belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start calling you a fixer. If I'm a unicorn, you're a fixer. There you go. Um, so, you know, what are some of the trends that are happening in the industry right now that you're excited about? I, I personally think FIDO is going to have a moment in the next few years. Um, definitely multi-factor authentication. I know that, you know, we're really um, making a lot of investment and growth in the RFID NFC space. Physical access control, you know, has new products coming and has like I said, you know, securing some of the world's most secure buildings. And that's always fascinating to me. Um, So what are some of the trends that are happening that you guys are excited about? Well, so you mentioned all the security trends. Um, I'm going to think about it from the marketing, a marketing standpoint, right? Which goes Mm -hmm. across all those, all those pieces, authentic human social content, short form video, AI automation, podcasts, chatbots, influencers, um, all of that stuff is like top out on my list of, of really wanting to to tap into as we're going into 2023 because we finally have like the space to be creative to do so. Definitely. Um, I also am very interested as, as I write about a lot in Web3 and the metaverse. Um, and, and for me, it's more, you know, there were so many mistakes made on the human level and the social mm-hmm. level um, in building out social networks, um, things that, you know, we just didn't know what we didn't know. Um, and now that we know those things, let's not repeat them in building out a metaverse. Uh, let's make it a safe and inclusive space for everyone. We can do it better this time. Anybody else? I think just kind of uh, piggybacking off what Anya said, just the interactive content. Um, I've been seeing a ton of it and it gets me engaged in wanting to learn more, click more, um, listen more, especially like with podcasts like we're doing right now. Um, seen a ton of TikToks and Instagram reels and short videos whether that's coming um, through a advertisement or just an email, um, just kind of giving enough information, but not enough um, to make the person click and kind of continue reading or listening. I can absolutely get lost in a TikTok cycle that takes me down a rabbit hole for <laughs> oh, yeah. hours, oh, hours. It's so admit it, but so can I. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially now that TikTok is, um, you know, evolved from people just dancing. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the fashion, the the food, I can't tell you how many recipes I've made off TikTok that were delicious. Um, I'm just I I could literally spend hours going through TikTok and um, and lose half my day. I feel like if I ever need to know something or I have a question about something, I'll always start at Google. And then if that doesn't give me a good enough answer, I'll just go to TikTok and I can always find an answer, a video or something. I don't think my son would have successfully moved into his dorm without TikTok. That was his, his sole source of information, not reading his emails from the school or anything like that. It was, oh, yeah, I saw on TikTok that this is what they do. That's it's so almost like our, our number one source of, of humanity, which is, you know, yeah, maybe troubling, great, but-, but also still a little terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> little yeah, terrifying. yeah. Um, all right. Well, you know, thank you all for joining us today. It's always, you know, we we don't um, because we're a remote team, we we don't really all get on a call all together very often. We try to do it once a week, but usually we're focused on, you know, just stuff we have to get done. So it's always fun to just catch up with you guys and, you know, hear your um, insights and um, take on, you know, what's going on in our industry. I mean, to be honest, we could be doing this for another four hours. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. (laughs) With this team. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Good vibes. Good vibes. (laughs) For sure. <laughs> All right. And for, for our, having us. Yeah. And for our audience, if you like this podcast, please like and subscribe. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. And um, I'm sure I'll talk to you all a thousand more times today. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You.
Our new IP-rated contactless smart card reader writer is perfect for clean rooms and industrial facilities. Utrust 3700 IG combines the world-class technology of Utrust 3700 F with a unique industrial-grade dust-proof, water-resistant enclosure. Crafted with polished, high-grade plastics and ultrasonic welded seams, it stays clean inside and out. Learn more at identive.com. Eliminate the risk of data breaches, phishing, password theft, and replay attacks with hardened multi-factor authentication cybersecurity. Passwordless logins are simple and secure with Utrust FIDO2 NFC Plus security keys. Insert the device, tap the button, and get secure access. It really is that easy. Learn more at identive.com. Physical security, identity verification, the IoT. The hyperconnectivity of our lives will only grow more pervasive. As technology becomes more automated and experiences more augmented, it's up to us to preserve our humanity and use new tools and trends for good. The only question is, are we up for the challenge?